One of the most useful ways to use jQuery in your site is to do form validation. So, um, you know, if somebody didn't put in their name or they didn't put in their email, um, we're going to do client side validation and remind them to put in their name, put in their email, and we can do all sorts of checks like that. Um, and in order to do that kind of thing, we're going to need to know how to select form elements. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. And in a later video, I will go over um, some common ways to do form validation on the client side. So what we have here um, is a basic form. It has some uh, text inputs. We have a select. We have some radio buttons. So um, let's just go down here into the document ready function. And the first one that we're doing is we're selecting all of the inputs on the page. And what we're going to do is we're going to give it a value of I'm an input. And one way you can do this is um, form space input. Um, we could actually just take off this form here too, and that would work fine. But um, I'm just going to leave that there for now. Um, it's a little bit more specific that way. And let's refresh the right side. And you'll see that um, first name, last name, email, they all got I'm an input. And the submit button also got I'm an input um, set for the value there because um, submit buttons are also um, a kind of input. But if we wanted to select all of the ones, uh, all of the text inputs, but not the submit button, we could use form space and then colon text. And that's going to check all of the um, inputs that have a type of text. So if I refresh on the right side now, you'll see that um, first name and last name got it. Email didn't because that was type of email. And then the submit button didn't also because this type is submit. We can also select form elements whether they're enabled or disabled. So what I have here is I have colon disabled and then we're just setting the value to I'm disabled. And if we refresh here, we'll see that the submit button um, had the text changed to I'm disabled because the way I had it in my markup, um, we had disabled is equal to disabled in the markup. So that's another way to um, select disabled items. And going on to the next one, we are checking to see what form elements is checked. And this is a really useful one that's going to come in handy. And I have form colon checked right here. And then we're using after here. And what this is going to do is just going to insert some text um, right after it. Um, let's just first open up the inspector here. And let's find that um, element here. Uh, we see here um, the input and then checked is equal to checked. The value is happy. And let's just refresh on the right side here. And you'll see that we had some uh, some text put after that. So let's just open this up again and go to that um, input uh, with the checks set to checked. And then we just have some text after it now. Um, so that's a way to select checked elements. And let's just go on to the next one. And the next one, uh, we're being even more specific. We're not just checking you know things that are checked because um, radio buttons could be checked and also check boxes could be checked. So if you only wanted to select radio buttons that were checked, we could use colon radio and then colon checked. And then we're putting some text after that. So let's just refresh here. And you know, because that button was a radio button, um, it's still getting some text put after it. Um, so you can be as specific as you want with these selectors. And um, I'm just going to show you an example of when this would be more useful. We're not actually going to run it, but now once we talk, start talking about form validation, you know, we're going to want to check some common things. We're going to want to check if a field is filled out. We're going to want to check if an email field has a proper email in it um, and all sorts of things like that. So what I have here is if not, okay, we're selecting the input with the name of first name. And then actually I forgot something here. We'd be checking for the value of that with dot val. And if this is an empty string, then it's going to evaluate to false. So if we put this exclamation mark here, which is um, going to negate the value. So uh, this is going to be false. So if it's not false, then this is all going to value to true. And then we're going to do please input your name. So this is one way you could check to see if something had a value set. And there's a lot of other different ways to validate your form. And I'm sure we'll talk about that in a future video.